Hello, Jeffrey Martin here, director of the Center for the Study of Non-Symbolic Consciousness and a research professor and director at the Transformative Technology Lab in Sofia University, Palo Alto, California, where we research how to help seekers become finders and how to help finders become explorers so that you and everyone else can live your most powerful and purposeful life. Well, I get asked all the time, are some levels of non-duality and persistent mystical experience, um, enlightenment, things like that, better than others? Are some of them real? Are some of them false? Is there one real and true level? Uh, there's just so many questions that people have around this. And they ask me that, of course, because for the last decade, we've researched this in thousands of people all around the world who have reported these uh, states. We're really the first research group in the world to create a protocol that helped people to get there so that we could study them before and after. We've done everything from psychological research to neuroscience research to you name it. Uh, so this is a great question and it really goes right to the heart of the early years of our research, the early part of our research, where we were just trying to get our arms wrapped around this remarkable population. If you don't know the story of that, I was just looking for who were the happiest people on earth and I was studying well-being. Uh, and I stumbled across this population and it's become, you know, basically the last 10 years of my life, over 10 years at this point. So first of all, there are absolutely different levels, but we don't call them levels. I like to call them locations. And the reason for that is because I don't actually think one is better than another one. I think they're all awesome, right? Uh, so the first thing is I'm not going to use the word levels because I don't like to put things into a hierarchy. I like to use the word locations, right? So we're going to talk about locations and there's a continuum of locations. There's four locations that are very accessible to people and then there's a bunch more that are much harder to get to that very few people experience. So there's a bunch of these. Um, and I think the important thing for you to realize is that there isn't, in fact, one right location. There isn't one right form of this. So I'm going to refer to this by the psychological term that we use, which is persistent non-symbolic experience, or PNSE. And that really represents uh, a non-religious, secular, psychological, and neurological heart of this experience. So this is the heart of the experience that runs across all of the different types of it worldwide. We spend a lot of time digging into and looking for the very core of this experience and trying to separate out all of the myths and um, really just trying to get down to you know, the deepest aspects of it that were common across people around the world, regardless of who they were, atheist or agnostic, spiritual or religious figure, whatever. Okay, so first of all, there isn't one right place as far as we can tell. Uh, and there, there are sort of four major locations. You can see me covering those. In other videos, I want to stay focused here on is, the, is are some locations better than other locations? Well, here's how we're thinking about today. Some locations are better than other locations depending upon what you're trying to do in your life. So one of the things that is often the case with spiritual and religious teachers is that they're usually embedded in a system. Maybe it's just their own belief system or maybe it's an old ancient tradition of some kind. But they're often embedded in a system which says, you've really got to push the pedal to the metal. You've really got to, you know, try to get past location one to location two and all the way to location three. And that's the pinnacle. That's where you stop. You stop at location three. Um, and you don't dare stop, you know, until you're at location three because you got to make it all the way. Um, we think that's not very helpful advice. And the reason for that is because you're out there living lives in the real world. And the reality is that not all locations are appropriate for all lifestyles, right? Let me give you a good example. So I have a friend who is an engineer, a very skilled engineer, and he's experienced locations one through four for a lot of his life. They just kind of came to him naturally. Uh, there are a small number of people that that's actually the case with. So he was a brilliant problem solver. And he found that what we call location three, and again, you can see our locations in other videos. Uh, what he found what we call location three was absolutely amazing for him. 
in terms of problem solving. So he would describe his work day as going in and rubbing sandpaper on his face for like 14 or 16 or more hours, really trying to solve these difficult problems, and then going home, getting some food, <laughs> getting some sleep, getting up, doing it all again the next day. And he's like, there's no way I could have done that if it wasn't for location three and the remarkable experience of location three. But guess what? The day came when he started his own company. And he had a huge track record, plenty of people willing to give him money, high hopes for his company, but he realized something really significant very early on, and that is location three didn't really seem the optimum place for him to run a company from. Uh, location three is often a very heart-centered place, a very giving place, and he's like, I'm kind of giving away the store here. That's not a good thing to do when you're a startup. Um, and so he shifted his location. Uh, and he shifted it to a more appropriate location for management. And eventually he reached the point where during the week he spends his time in one location and on the weekend he spends his time in another location to sort of for his own uh, higher enjoyment or higher level of well-being or whatever, right? So that's kind of the way we've started to think about these different locations. Rather than thinking pedal to the metal, full steam ahead, who cares about the consequences for your family or your job or your wider life? No, there are appropriate places for you to be on this continuum, depending upon what you want for your life. So you've kind of got to take an appraisal of what it is that you want in your life. Is, your, is family very important to you? Family and kids and things like that? Because when you first transition onto the continuum, there can be times when some old conditioning can still be triggered and, your, and, and the experience of p &E SE can be suppressed a little bit. Nobody knows how to push your buttons like your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> your kids are also pretty good at pushing your buttons. Your parents, they're pretty good at pushing your buttons, right? So there's a couple of ways to deal with that. You can either think to yourself, whoop, time for a divorce. I'm gonna get away from these people. I don't wanna have this experience where this is suppressed at all. I want this to be up. I wanna be living this amazing experience all the time. Uh, or I'm gonna stick it out. And I'm going to let this conditioning expire, basically. Let it wear off over time, and I'm just gonna live with it. I'm gonna live with these triggers for a period of time, and in our experience, by about the seven year point, they've, even the big ones, have mostly burned off. You can accelerate that with different things. We'll talk about that in different videos and whatnot, different talks I've given, research papers, whatever. Uh, again, not the purpose of this video, but what is the purpose of this video is to say, you've gotta figure out how you want this to integrate into your life. And although you've got a lot of teachers out there telling you that you should just push the pedal to the metal, and you should just really go for it as far and as fast as you can go. Uh, in fact, that's not what we see being helpful for most people who are really trying to integrate this into their life. This is just another thing that you want to figure out how to integrate into your life, right? So you've got to figure out what are your priorities in your life? What are the different types of persistent non-symbolic experience? Which one's most appropriate for you in terms of what you want in your life right now? And then pursue that specific form of it. All right, so are some levels better than others? Absolutely, but only contextually, we think, based on what it is that you want for your life.